Hi, Michelle from Birdcage and Thread here with a tutorial for the Retreat Bag by Emmeline Bags. This all-purpose bag can be used to corral anything from makeup to sewing supplies. It's easy to sew and with the specially designed frame hardware makes this bag look so professional as well as functional. This is a free pattern and can be downloaded from emmelinebags.com and was designed to be used with Emmeline Bags internal wireframe hardware. These quality frames can also be purchased at emmelinebags.com and I'll put a link in the description box below. The frames are strong, durable and they won't stain or mark your fabrics and they have protective caps on the end so it stops your fabric wearing. These are also the correct size and shape for the design of this bag so you can sew with confidence knowing that the designer of the pattern also designed the frame intended for the pattern. This pattern has two sizes to choose from and depending on which size you choose determines which frame hardware to purchase. If you decide to make the small size, which is what I have here, you'll need to purchase style A frames and if you choose to make the larger size you'll need to purchase style B frames. As for fabrics and other requirements, they're listed in the free pattern, but as a note, the interfacing for the large size lists one yard in the pattern. However, this should be one and a half yards. So just make a note of that if you intend to sew the large size. So grab your supplies and let's get started. So you'll need to cut your pieces according to whether you've chosen the small or the large retreat bag. So just refer to the pattern for the measurements. But in either case, this is what you'll need. Two pieces of fabric for your outer, two pieces of lining fabric, four pieces of woven interfacing, two pieces of fusible fleece, two pieces of fabric for your pocket. In this case, I've chosen the lining fabric and two pieces to match the pocket of woven interfacing. You'll also need two pieces of fabric for your zipper tabs. The pattern suggests using the outer fabric, but in this case I'm using the lining just for some contrast. You'll also need a zipper and the size depends on whether you're making the small or the large retreat bag. So again, just refer to the pattern for the size that you need. Lastly, you'll need the style of frame to suit either the small or the large retreat bag. As I said in the beginning, if you're making the small bag, you'll need style A frames. And if you're making the large bags, you'll need style B frames. These can be purchased from emmelinebags.com. For this demonstration, I'm making the small size. So I have the style A frames. To begin, you'll need to fuse the interfacing to the wrong sides of both the two outer and the two lining pieces. Then you'll fuse the fusible fleece to the interfacing on both the outer pieces. Next we're going to fuse the interfacing to the pocket pieces. So take a pocket piece and place it wrong side up and then take the interfacing and place the glue side down to the wrong side of the pocket and then fuse that together and then repeat that with the second pocket. So this is what you should have now, two outer pieces with both interfacing and fleece fused to them and two lining fabric pieces with interfacing fused to the back of it. Now we're going to cut out the corners on each of these pieces. So depending on what size, whether you're doing the small or the large, you'll need to refer to the pattern as to how much to cut out of the corners. Now just to make sure if you've got a directional fabric, make sure you're cutting the bottom corners, not the top. So these are my bottom corners here and I'm going to measure from the edge of the fabric, the raw edge of the fabric, I'm going to, for the small size, it's a two inch corner and I'll just draw those in like that and then repeat for the opposite corner.
then cut those corners out and you're going to repeat the same on the other outer piece and on both the lining pieces. To make cutting out the corners quicker you can just mark on one side like that then fold it in half and cut out the square out of the two corners at once. That just saves marking both corners. So now you should have four pieces with their corner, bottom corners cut away. So just put your lining pieces aside for now and we're just going to work on these two outer pieces. And what we're going to do, we're going to trim the seam allowance away from the fleece only in these corners. So you can mark it if you like, but I'm just going to eyeball quarter of an inch and again it's only the fleece nothing else just to reduce some bulk in that seam there and repeat that on the other opposite corner here you might have to just lift the, the fleece away slightly to get underneath there Then you're going to repeat the same process for the second outer piece. Now we're going to prepare the pockets. So take one of the pocket pieces and fold it in half right sides together. And using a quarter inch seam allowance, sew around the three sides, leaving a gap a three inch gap on the long side for turning but make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end of each of your lines of stitching. So once you've done that you're going to press these bottom seams open on both sides just like that. It'll just make this a bit easier when we go to close that gap. Then you're going to trim the corners on all four corners. Make sure that the seam allowance is facing down so you can trim that away. Be careful not to cut through your stitching. Then you're going to turn the pocket right side out through that gap that you left. And gently poke the corners out with the tool. If you don't have something like this you can use a chopstick or a knitting needle or something. Anything that's going to push those corners out but just be gentle with the corners that you don't poke through the fabric. Once you've done that take it over to your ironing board and give it a good press flat. And this is where folding that seam allowance back is going to help fold, help with the pressing there on that, that little gap. Then you're going to top stitch along this folded edge here, about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. You can choose to do one or two lines of top stitching, it's up to you. Then you're going to repeat the same for the other pocket piece. Next we're going to attach the pocket to the lining. So take one pocket piece and one lining piece. Then we're going to find the center of both of those. So take your lining piece, 
fold it in half, lining up those bottom corners, then find the centre of that bottom edge there and mark either with a fold, a removable marker, or you can even cut a notch, whatever works for you. Then take your pocket piece and do the same along this long folded edge, sorry, along the long edge here with the gap. The other edge is where you've top stitched. So just make sure it's where the gap is. This time don't mark with a notch, use a removable marker, a pin or even a fold. Then we're going to place the pocket three inches up from the bottom if you're doing the small size or four inches up from the bottom if you're doing the large size. Now I'm going to place one of my ruler markings on that centre point which in my case I've lined up the six inch mark then I'm going to line that centre point up with the six inch mark on here. It doesn't mean that six inches is in the centre it's just I've lined up one of the marks on my ruler with the centre point. Then just pin that down. And it's a good idea to use a ruler because you can line up the ruler with the raw edge and then you can line up the pocket with the ruler giving you a nice horizontal straight edge here. Then using a 1 8 inch seam allowance you're going to stitch around these three sides here making sure you back stitch at the start and the end of your stitches of your line of stitching here particularly because these are high stress points so make sure you give that a good back stitch and when you're stitching around here you'll be closing the gap at the same time. Then you repeat the same with the other lining piece and the other pocket piece. Now we're going to make the zipper tabs for the ends of the zipper. But before we get started, make sure your zipper is cut to length and the length is indicated in the pattern whether you're doing the small or the large retreat bag. So take one of your zipper tabs and in the pattern it states three inches by two inches. Mine is a little wider because I have a wider zipper tape, but the pattern says three inches by two inches. Then along this three inch, inch edge here, you're going to fold in both ends by half an inch and give that a press with the iron. Then take your zipper. I'm going to place it right side down along here. About halfway in, um, I'm not going halfway in because I have metal teeth on the zipper and the sewing machine won't go through the metal teeth. So I'm just going in as far as I can and you're also centering along here. So that next fold the opposite raw edges in here and here and pressing with your iron as you go. Then lastly you're going to fold this edge up to meet the other edge and of course you'll line that up when you're at your iron and give it a good press and tuck in any edges that are sticking out. Then turn it over and from the top end here you're going to sew a square along the edge here about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Then you'll repeat the same on the other end of your zipper. Now we're going to be attaching the zipper. So for this you'll need an outer piece, a lining piece and your zipper with the tabs attached. So take your lining piece and place it right side up on your work surface. Then take the zipper and centre that along this long edge here. I'm just going to eyeball it but you can measure it for accuracy. And at this point pay attention to whether you want your zipper to open from left to right or from right to left. Then take your outer piece and place that right side down again lining up that raw edge with the zipper tape. 
I'm just going to place a couple of wonder clips for now. Then we're going to make a couple of marks. So on this right edge here, we're going to measure from this, this end in one inch. So you're measuring from this short raw edge in by one inch. Then from this top raw edge here, you're going to measure down three quarters of an inch and make a mark. Then you're going to take this over to your machine and using your zipper foot and a quarter inch seam, begin somewhere in the middle and don't forget to back stitch. So along here until you get to the one inch mark and back stitch. Then with your needle down, you're going to pull this zipper down towards that three quarter inch mark and then continue that seam along the top there and don't forget to back stitch at the end. Then you're going to flip the whole thing over so the lining is now facing you. Then you're going to repeat the same process, measuring in one inch here and then from the top here down three quarters of an inch. Then you'll line up the stitching that you made previously, not forgetting to back stitch. So sew along there with your uh, zipper foot and quarter inch seam until you get to that one inch mark, back stitch, pull the zipper out the way and then continue along that seam till the end. Now you've sewn in one side of the zipper, take both the fabric pieces and press them, press that seam open with both the lining and the outer. And you can see that the zipper is free on each end but the lining is sewn to the main. Then you repeat that with your other lining piece and your other outer piece along the other side of the zipper tape. But don't top stitch just yet, that will be done at the end. So now you have your zipper sewn in and you've pressed those two seams along here away from the zipper on both the outer and the lining pieces. And just as a reminder, don't top stitch yet. We're going to do that later. So at this point, you want to open your zipper and then you're going to place right sides, place the outer pieces right sides together as well as the lining pieces right sides together. Then we're going to pin or wonder clip these side seams. Then when you get to the zipper here at the seam. You're going to tuck that inside and you can pin that out of the way if you want to or you can just leave it but just make sure it doesn't get caught in the seam. Then you're going to line up these two seams here and place a pin or a wonder clip at that point. Then you're going to continue pinning or clipping down the side. making sure to line everything up. Then I'm at the point of the outer pieces or the outer fabric. So at this point you're going to sew the whole seam across there. Then continue up this side. And again, tuck the zipper into the either the lining or the outer. And again, lining up these seams here. Continuing along the side. Making sure, you, again, you don't catch the zipper in that side seam. Then you're going to clip along here or pin, whatever you're using. When you go to sew this seam in the lining, just remember to leave a gap in this bottom section here. So you're going to start your stitching with a back stitch along here, stop and back stitch, break your stitching 
and then leave a gap, continue on with your stitching. Remember to back stitch till the end and then remember to back stitch. Now that you've sewn all the way around and leaving a gap in the lining for turning, press each of your seams open. So just start on one side and press all of your seams open. It just gives a neater finish to your work. So go along with your iron. Just remember to turn the steam off so you don't catch your fingers. Once you've done one side, turn it over and fold back your other seam and press. Then we're going to create the corners. So start any corners fine. So you're going to pull out that corner and line up these two seams here. And then pin or clip that in place. Then using a quarter inch seam you're going to sew across this corner here and then for added strength you can sew another line of stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then you repeat that with the other three corners. Now that we have the corners sewn we're going to turn the bag right side out through the gap. Then you can gently push these corners out. Then you can either machine or hand stitch this opening closed. Just tuck the raw ends inside and using a matching thread, again either hand stitch or machine stitch that closed. Then we're going to put that lining down into the bag. Now you've turned your bag right side out and closed the opening in the lining, give your bag a good press, especially around this top zipper seam here, along the sides and along each seam. Then we're going to top stitch around the zipper. So begin at one section and you're going to top stitch along this seam here about an eighth of an inch from the seam and you're going to do that all the way around until you get to where you started your stitching. Then you're going to make a second line of stitching half an inch away from the first line and again go all the way around until you get back to where you started. Now that you have your two lines of top stitching done, one about an eighth of an inch away from the seam there and another one half an inch away from the first, all that's left to do now is to insert the bag frames. So to do that you're going to unpick a couple of stitches in the lining. So you're going to unpick a few stitches along this vertical seam here between the first line of top stitching and that second line of top stitching. So just unpick that like that. Then just to help the frames get started I'm going to just insert a little tool just to help the frames get started and just open up that fabric slightly. can see it's left a little gap to begin with. And just wiggle that in. push all that all the way in there. 
just going to use my unpicker just to push that in there. Then you're going to repeat the same through that same opening with the other frame. So again you can just use a little tool just to open up that fabric just to get it started. Now that you've inserted the frames, the last thing that you'll need to do is just take a stitch, a couple of stitches there just to close that opening. And then to close the bag initially, just pinch the two frames together and the zipper will come together. And then just do that a few times just to train the fabric where it should go. And that's your retreat bag complete. Thanks for watching.